Hello everyone, Ryan here from iOS Mars. Today I'm going to show you, you know, a little bit more about BeatMaker 2 and uh, you know, specifically I'm going to show you uh, about the keyboard sampler because, uh, you know, I think this keyboard sampler is just really, really great and, uh, you know, I don't see enough people using it or uh, talking about it or anything like that. So, uh, I'm just going to make this video hoping that, uh, you know, some people will learn a little bit more about this and use it a little bit more often. So, I've loaded my keyboard sampler here in it with an empty preset just so I can show you everything straight from scratch. So, in order to e start editing this, we're going to we're going to click on it and uh open it up where, you know, I loaded I loaded an empty preset. So you can see there's no sounds or anything here. But um let's go into the settings of it. And uh what we're going to concentrate mostly today is the mapping. But you know, we got we got a filter here and in, in you know, LFO settings and everything. So that you know, there's quite a bit of stuff we can do with our sound once we're done. But um, you know, the thing I like most about the keyboard sampler is using it for drum uh samples because uh we can sample, uh, you know, many different samples to the actually the same key in order to have, you know, a variety of different sounds as we we go throughout different velocities or you know we can even have them play at the same time <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do here I'll just click click on mapping and mapping is going to be what we're gonna concentrate on mostly today so on the left hand column here is our layers and that's gonna be where we can divide our uh, our samples by you know different velocities or have them play together or you know any any different uh, <clears throat> excuse me, any different uh, uh, variety of that. And then we have the area for our zones, and that's where we're going to set up um, where each sample is uh, played from. So you, you can have a zone, you know, from the whole keyboard length um, down to just one key. So what I'm going to do today is um, I'll add a second layer. And as you can see, we can edit the name of the layer here and, you know, call it whatever we want. And... Uh, I'll do the other one too. Whoops. And we'll just name this. Yeah, good enough. So, and uh, we can have our different velocities set here. So, if I want to take this uh, velocity way down on this one, to you know, between 0 and 53, and then on the other one, I can bring this one up. Whoops. I'll bring it up to, you know, 54. So now anything that we put inside this layer will only be played from our low velocity 0 to our high velocity 53, which is going to be, you know, a pretty uh, gentle tap of the keyboard. Um, the Beatmaker 2 keyboard actually doesn't respond to that, but um, you can do it through the MIDI editor or you can also use, um, you know, a MIDI instrument plugged in, which is what I like to do. So anyhow, uh, let's get started on this. I'm just going to actually put this back to what it was originally uh, to show you uh, something here quickly. But let's go ahead and add our first zone. And now as we can see, um, it's highlighted all our keys in green down here, um, meaning that every key that is in green is within this range. So what we're going to do is, first thing we'll do is load our sample. So I'm just going to go into my own content here, and uh, I'm going to grab uh, just some uh, drum samples that I've made uh, previously here. So let's grab the kick drum. So as you can hear, um, it's stretching this, uh, well not stretching, but um, you know, changing the key of our of our kick sample, which you know it can be really nice too if you're trying to tune your 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 kick to the song, as some people do like to do. But uh, we're not going to really worry about that today. But um, for each zone, we have um, a volume, a pan, a semi semitones, and a fine tune knob here, which we can uh, set up for you know for each uh, each individual. Uh, zone and we can have as many zones as we want and uh, as far as I know there's no limit as well as layers I don't think there's a limit to that either um, you know I have uh, I have some drum kits that are pretty complicated and have you know quite a bit of layers like uh, like that uh, guitar um, 
Yamaha Pacifica uh, set that I made. Um, it uses, I think, 12 different velocity settings. So, you know what, when you get into that, it starts to get really confusing. But, anyhow, so, what I, what we're going to do for this one, because we don't want this uh, kick to be all over the place, we just want it to be on one single key. So, in this area here, we're going to see the where we can... Uh, where we can manipulate our range. So I'm going to take my low key and I'm going to bring it up and as you can see in the little uh the little uh, keyboard display here, you can it, there's a, a representation of what I'm doing. So you can see where your range is going to be a little bit before ahead of time. So C2 is good. So now I'm going to bring the high range all the way down to C2 as well. You can just hold it because it'll stop when it gets to C2. You can't do the same for this, but this is the bass key. Let me uh, let me bring my keyboard range over here. So as you can hear, the sample's much, much too low. Let me turn the volume up on this a little bit. Much, much too low. So bringing the bass key over to the same key will fix that, because it'll be in tune with what we want. Let's bring it down C2. And there we go. We got our kick exactly how we want it to sound. You know, we can we can we can deepen it a little bit if we want or raise it up. But yeah, <clears throat> that's pretty much um how we're going to do this. So now that we have this one zone, let's do the exact same thing over here. And um I'm going to go ahead and create a, my new zone and inside this layer now. So as you can see, if I click he he he, we have our our kick, and then in ha ha ha, we still have nothing. So let's load a sample into here, and just so that we have a nice contrast, I'm just gonna load this crash sample. So let's uh. So as you can hear, we got our kick there and our crash. So now what we're gonna do is the exact same thing again, just so that uh so that we can we can have this all on one key and be in tune to how it's supposed to be how it's supposed to sound so there we go we got a kick and a crash at the same time so obviously with the kick and the crash at the same time now you can start to see how we can start to evolve this so let me go back to this one and we can add our, our next zone in and it'll immediately start at the the next highest key all the way to the highest so what we can do now is we can just hold this button and uh... we'll bring down our range so that we only have the C here and now we can load another sample you know we can load, um, where's my crash? Snare, or er, sn sorry, snare. So now we can put a snare in there. And we're going to have to obviously bring the, the bass key down again. And there we go. So now, you know, again, we can do the exact same thing on our ha ha track here. And, uh, and keep going and going and going and create, you know, multi-layered samples you know if you wanted to put the exact same sample in there you could put the exact same sample in a bunch of different times and and slightly tune it different and you know get yourself a really full sound out of a you know a kind of mutation of what your your regular sample would have been so you know really cool for that um, and it also works you know if you're gonna use an instrument so quickly here um, all I'm gonna do is just pop out of this uh, out of this here you can click this little button to get back and if you click um, right here we can go ahead and uh, or sorry actually if we click save we can go ahead and save this as you know whatever we want to call it so we'll call it ha 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 drum here we go good enough whatever I'm not gonna ever use this but it's just an example to show you where to get started so let's add our, our second keyboard sampler again empty preset and I'll just do this one really really quickly here just to uh... whoops forgot to change the instrument so there we go mapping so we got our fresh instrument here so I'll add another layer and uh... I'm gonna add my first zone and my second zone really quickly load my sample 
and I'm just going to go back and I'll, I'll go into the, the default sound library and I'm just going to grab a synthesizer sample here. I'll grab a lead sample, just lead number one. Um, we'll, we'll just use um, our mid-range here, so those, or rather we'll grab C3, that should be good. Alright, so that's our layer one. So let's go over to our layer two and we're just gonna add the exact same sample again. So let's let's add that. So now we got you know two exact same samples and you're not gonna hear much. But uh, uh if we take this and, and you know drag drag down maybe you know seven seven semitones here. Sorry, my finger's getting in the way totally. Then we got we start to we start to get a, a different shape here as you know now we have a chord and uh we can go a little bit further and you know pan pan each one a little bit differently and uh we can close this out and then we can go in and start to you know manipulate the the different things maybe we can we can turn this into sort of a sort of a sort of you know a pad or whatever So um, you know, a lot of cool things we can do here, as as well as um, you know, once we have this all set out, you know, we can we can mess around with um, sending this uh, via MIDI CC uh, values to other apps and everything. But you know, I've done that in other in other tutorials, so not important for this. But yeah, that's that's our basic like introduction to using this uh, Beatmaker 2 keyboard sampler to create your own instruments. You know, obviously, like I showed you the first time, we can go ahead and and change these velocities so that you know when you play hard, it'll play one sample. When you play soft, it'll play another sample. So really useful if you have you know a really nice sample set. Um, where things are, are sampled properly by velocity and not just with, uh, you know, the normal volume velocity that we hear so much, uh, especially with drum kits on iOS. You know, I like to have uh, my soft snare sound a lot different than a hard snare hit, as it should. In real life, it really does. So, yeah, that's all I wanted to show you guys about this. I hope this was helpful, and, uh, yeah, visit iOS Mars uh, for more info and videos like this. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next time.